Hello beautiful and welcome, welcome to another video of Through the Decades Look. In today's video we are going to recreate a 1950s look on my face and uh, hopefully you're gonna enjoy it but if you don't know already this year i decided to go uh every month and create a look from through the decade all the way from 1900s going all the way until present day and because this is the fifth month in 1950s it's the era that we're gonna do today if you're interested in the other eras i'm gonna link them in the description bar so you can go and check them out but today i'm super excited for 1950s i think 1950s are the best era to be alive it is such a beautiful era with such amazing things going on and beautiful makeup so i'm excited to start going and play with these so let's get into it so 1950s right 1950s is such a beautiful era because they starting to forget about the horrible 40s and uh, everybody's starting to think about automation and there's so many uh, amazing things coming out for like uh, innovations in the kitchen right a lot of new things coming out on that aspect and now a lot of the middle class can afford things that only the rich people could afford so that is exciting in itself i'm gonna start doing this uh, look with a super a super goop unseen sunscreen i i literally started wearing this um i don't know like a, a week ago or so and i really do like how it feels on the face so uh hopefully it's gonna look good under the foundation that we're gonna use today because today i'm gonna use a foundation that i haven't used in a while so i'm interested to see how that's gonna go but 1950s are nice. There's so many amazing uh, sex bomb girls coming out, right? Um, we know when you think about 1950s, you think about Marilyn Monroe. You think about uh, Audrey Hepburn. You think about, in my, <laughs> in my uh, uh, instance, I had to stop because my dog was trying to find his spot so we took a little break for that but what i was trying to say you think about marilyn monroe you think about audrey hepburn but for me personally i think about sophia lauren and if you don't know who sophia lauren was or is um but i'm going to talk about her a little bit more while i'm putting the foundation so this is a foundation that i tried like right in the last day of 2020 and I do really liked it then and I truly want to try it again today. So this is Bare Minerals Original Liquid Mineral Foundation and I have mine in medium tan 18. I think this is a little bit too light for me but I guess we shall see how this is going to be. The foundation, they used to wear it. I, I put it in one of these things because I don't want to uh, put it in my hand anymore. Um, but how they used to wear foundation, they used to um, apply a little bit more of a darker shade than what their shade was. And then they would go in with a powder that was a little bit more uh, lighter, right? More of an ivory pink uh powder to set the foundation the foundation it is liquid now the liquid foundation is taking over there's some cream still around but liquid foundation is the way to go in this era i really forgot how luminous this foundation is 
but I still do like it. I like how it looks on my skin. So delicious. But definitely the era is requiring a very powdery matte finish on the skin. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a Charlotte Tilbury. I'm going to go with Charlotte Tilbury uh, powder and... This is uh, in tan. It's a little bit darker than my skin tone. But why I'm going with this one is because I want my face to look as bronze as I can. I know it's not necessarily the era uh, of like looking bronze in things. But today, not only do I look at the era, but also I look at... Uh, Sophia Lauren as makeup. I'm gonna put it on the screen the the picture that I found that I'm just gonna try to copy as much as I can today because in my opinion she was the sexiest and the most beautiful woman at the time uh, that was you know in front of the screen and not only that but she is almost one of the only women's that had a skin color similar to mine so that's why I am trying to replicate a makeup look that she uh, wore during those times um, so Sophia Warren it is a um, movie star uh, that was born and raised in Italy and then moved in 1957 to United States and uh, she participated in certain movies alongside what Frank Sinatra and others so she was pretty she was a gorgeous woman in my opinion gorgeous beautiful she still is gorgeous and beautiful and she's still pretty like I think she's in her 80s right now so you can imagine but I do want to replicate a look that she created and um, looked absolutely gorgeous on her, on her face. So what we're going to do for the brows, I think she had the perfect brows and those are the brows that I actually wear on my daily basis and I, I can't believe that I already do that. Um, I finally was able to well, get my uh, my uh, eyebrows close to what her brows used to look like. But the era, it was similar to what her brows were. So basically, you just keep it very natural. But you keep it very arch up right here. And then you continue down right there. So that's basically how the era used to have the brows going down. And uh, she had like super beautiful manicured uh, brows and very, very dark ones too. And to do that, I'm using NYX Professional Makeup Brow Tint Pen Lift and Snatch in Black. So now that the brows are done, I want to do something for my under eyes because... I know they don't have concealer yet, still they don't have concealer, but I want to do something to just lighten up that era. So I'm going to go with this uh, Hourglass Ambient Dim Light because this is a very light powder and it's looking extremely natural and I love it when it goes under the eyes with it for a very natural, beautiful look. So that's what I'm gonna do. I can't, I'm noticing that my face is still looking very shiny through the powder yet, still. But, you know, it is what it is. We're gonna leave it like that. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put more powder on. But the most important thing I believe during this time it is blush and also a liner. So the blush, blush and lipstick. Blush and lipstick, they're finally starting to go away from the rosy tones. I'm super excited about that because now they're more into the peach 
orangey tones and that's something that I really do enjoy and I'm gonna go with this sugary cosmetics um, blush palette and I am gonna take this orange cream blush and put it in the high points of the cheeks like right here that's where they would put the the blush during this uh, period which it's gorgeous and I love it love it love it so I'm gonna do a little bit of that there we go I did went a little bit lower too because it just feel like it, it makes you look a little bit more bronzed and a little bit more um it screams a little bit more summery to me but for the eyeliner so and the eyes basically so the eyes they were saying that the there were two colors primary used on the eyes usually it would be gray with green or blue with like a, a lighter a lighter color like cream or something like that or nude right so what i am gonna try to use today and i'm gonna go with this one this is the nabla secret palette because i needed something italian <laughs> then i thought why not go with this one and i think green would look freaking amazing um so I'm trying to think maybe because that addiction looks absolutely gorgeous and it's more like a it's like a teal uh, but I, I really want to go with that one and I'm also gonna go with maybe hmm, I'm gonna go with Gil Gib, Ghibli I think it's the name I'm gonna take the Ghibli one and I'm gonna do this one all over like all the way up and then I'm just gonna go with this I promise like closer to my brows for a little bit of sparkle not much because this one is not a very uh, pigmented but I'm gonna do just a tiny bit and then I'm gonna take that addiction and I'm gonna use that one in the crease just a tiny bit and I'm gonna try to blend this out as much as I can actually I'm gonna extend it to the lower part of the lid okay i think that is good that is good and now we're gonna do the doe eye so the doe eye you're supposed to have this beautiful liner on the top and also on the bottom but i do not want to go on the top and bottom with a liquid liner so i'm gonna do liquid liner on the top and then i'm gonna do pencil liner on the bottom so for the top i'm gonna go with a man eater from tarte i really like this one because it's very easy to do that beautiful line at the end which is this much right here so you tell me what do you which star do you think of when you think about 1950s let me know down below I would really like to hear from you So you see just a tiny little bit out there but this is like a normal liner that I usually use I just go a little bit further than this one but this is how they used to do it back then and I'm gonna do really quickly the uh, bottom one right here with you so I'm gonna go with this one from Essence this is the long lasting in black fever uh, liner and I'm gonna line it because you, you're supposed to meet it with this liner right here I'm gonna line it 
all the way from down here all the way up there kind of like that ah that is so beautiful and i think sofia would have worn something like this that is gorgeous gorgeous let me finish this other and i'll come back all right so for mascara for mascara they would use mascara only on the top lashes they would not use mascara on the bottom lashes so that's what we're gonna do today i'm gonna go with kkw mascara and I wanted to talk a little bit more about the era. Another thing that I really love about this era is that for the very first time, the idea is being introduced that women should buy their own things and they do not have to wait for the guys to buy it as gifts. Like the first time it's being, a, a campaign is being run by Estee Lauder that it's saying you should be buying your own perfume you do not need to wait for somebody else to buy it for you especially now when the women's already proven themselves that they are capable of working and they're capable capable of keeping the country uh, alive right they are finally uh being seen and finally uh, showing more than uh, just being there for the guys right it's a it's a little bit of like independence win in my opinion so that's a nice touch um yes the con or the crazy breast uh, uh bra is it being introduced and now um all the guys are looking at breasts um, and that's like the most sexiest part, right? Uh, the very first uh, Playboy is being published and is being in that is being published by what uh, nude pictures of Marilyn Monroe, which she was a brunette back then. And then she changed her hair to blonde because blonde was the hair color of the era a lot of people consider blonde being the most beautiful hair color there is and sexy as well but there is so much joy i would say even though women are being seen as sex symbols and they're being looked at like that I still think in this era we get to see a different type of uh, of of view uh, amongst women, but also amongst guys because they now understand and they now uh, see that a woman can do a guy's job as well. So I added a little bit of mascara on the top, nothing on the bottom because they would not wear on the bottom. Also, they would wear lashes as well. Um, but lashes are not something that I like to wear, so I'm not going to add that. The ordinary woman would not wear lashes, only the movie stars would. But So I'm not going to add anything like that. Now for lips. For lips... This is the thing, it's like I finally can get away from those pinks or reds. Now we can go something with more corals and peach and things like that. So I'm gonna go and apply this one from Boxum. This is the Vava Plump Light Down because this one has a little bit more of that corally shade. And we'll see, if I, if I need to change it, I can change it. Yeah, no, I think this is, this is pretty good. And for the lips, yes, you will overdraw on them and make them look a little bit fuller.
there we go and pretty much that's what it is i'm gonna add just a tiny bit more powder because i feel like it is a little bit too light in my opinion i mean i'm too shiny so this is huda beauty banana bread powder and i'm gonna take just a tiny bit and just kind of set everything in place and make myself look just a little bit more matte so here is the 1950s look do i look like sophia lauren <laughs> i don't know you tell me but i really do enjoy how this turn out to be and i feel like this 1950s is a beautiful beautiful makeup that you use on your face it's very nice it's very acceptable as well the makeup is not required to be in a certain way the body now is finally accepted to be a little bit more curvier and to show some figure right so 1950s is a beautiful era. I really enjoy it. I love this look and I'm very excited to go even better from now on because I know 60s are really cool as well. And then 70s, oh, I cannot wait for the 70s because it's going to be crazy colors. But yeah, this is how it looks right now. This is how my representation of what Sophia Lauren would have worn back then. And this is how everything turned out to be. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. Don't forget we have that giveaway still going on. So the secret question of the day it is, do I look like Sophia Lauren or not? <laughs> uh, but thank you so much for watching and being here. And I will see you all next time. Also, I'm freaking stoked. We are at 211 uh subscriber at the time. I cannot believe we're there. I'm so happy about it. Yoo-hoo! And I will see you. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you all next time with another video. Goodbye.